everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do a brisket in the Old Faithful Weber kettle. So it's gonna be a great video for any beginners or anyone who owns a Weber. So we started by just setting up our snake using Olive Pipco briquettes. We've gone with a two by two stack. So this should last for about 10 to 12 hours. So I'm gonna be using some cherry wood today from Natural Smoke. You can use any of your favorite smoking wood that goes with beef. So you can use like black wattle, blackwood, peach, pecan, or any of your other favorites. But uh, as for now, I'm gonna get stuck into trimming this brisket. We've just got regular everyday supermarket brisket, nothing too flash. And uh, yeah, we'll get stuck into it by starting with the trim. So you just wanna start by removing any hard fat. So this is a point, this is a flat up this end. Always a big chunk of hard fat in here. You can just feel it, it's just solid fat. So we're gonna start by just pretty much getting rid of this. So you can see that's just solid fat the whole way through. Still a big chunk in there. Do your best to scoop it out. Then we'll try and get rid of some of this fat and silver skin. Don't have to get all of it. Just want to get anything thicker than a couple of mil. Pretty happy with the bottom and you just want to feel along the top if there's any hard parts just want to trim that down i'm going to try and leave a little bit of fat on there about one to two mil anything over that i find it just doesn't render down Don't chuck away any of your trimmings, you can always use that for a bit of burger mints. So I'm pretty happy with it up on the flat. through there so I'm happy just to square that up a little bit. You always get a big pocket of fat sort of where the flat goes into the uh, point so you want to try and scoop it as much as that out as possible. flap here you can either fold it down like that or you can remove it so I'm pretty happy with that I'm not gonna be able to do much about it now you can scoop a bit more out if you want but that's pretty much as far as I go for a, a home everyday sort of brisket all right guys so that's our brisket trimmed up it's gonna sit in the fridge overnight and uh, we'll get it on in the morning so we'll come back then all right, so it's the next morning. We're ready to get this brisket on. So I've just put 12 Ashdover red hot briquettes in there at the start of the steak. I've got all my vents wide open on the Weber. So once we get the brisket on, I'm gonna leave my vents wide open. We're gonna put our temperature gauge in there. And um, we're gonna just slowly shut down that bottom vent when we get up to about that 175 Fahrenheit mark. And then we're just gonna stabilize it off and then we're probably gonna end up just having our bottom vent just a touch open. And we're gonna leave our top one completely open and uh, that should stabilize off at around that 275 to 300 or that 135 to 150 Celsius mark in the pit temp. So I'm gonna coat the brisket with some mustard because I got it out of the packet and um, wrapped it up in glad wrap and left it in the fridge overnight. 
I'm going to coat it with mustard because it's dried up a little bit. If you were getting it straight out of the packet and then seasoning it, you probably wouldn't need to put mustard on it, but I just like to put some on to help bind the rub. So we'll go ahead and do that. All right, so now we'll go ahead and season it. You can use your favorite beef rub. You can use a smoky past with Risca, the Cosmos Q Texas beef, Butcher's Axe, uh, Big Bark. There's heaps of good ones out there. But um, I've just got a 50-50 mix, nice and simple, kosher salt and black pepper. That's all you really need. But like I said, if you've got a favorite beef rub, go ahead and use that. So you notice I've got this pocket here that sort of creates a bit of a well. So what I might do once the bark is set is I might get something underneath it, like a little cake tin or some scrunched up air foil, just to prop it up to help the moisture run off of that. All right, so now my brisket seasoned up. We get our cooking grate on. Gonna get our first bit of smoking wood on as well and um, put our temperature probe in and get this brisket going. All right, so as you can see, we've got our brisket away from the heat source. And we're probably gonna rotate that cooking grate around so as this part of the snake dies and it starts troubling underneath the brisket here we're going to rotate it around so your brisket's never directly over the top of the charcoal. Put our temperature probe here ready and then we want to have the vent on our lid so the smoke comes up and over the brisket so we're going to have our vent over here and like I said once we start getting up to around that 175 range reading on here in our pit temp we're going to start closing our bottom vent down until it's almost shut. We're going to leave our top one open. You can chuck a temperature probe in each end. We're going to probably look to wrap this at around the 160 internal mark. Just in some foil and um, we'll go from there. So we'll get this lid on, get this brisket cooking. All right, so we're about two and a half hours in. I've just had a quick look and I've noticed that the snake is starting to get close to the underside of the brisket. So what I'm gonna do now is chuck some high heat gloves on. We're gonna rotate that cooking grate around so the brisket gets further away from the heat source. And we're also gonna rotate the brisket itself so the point end is closest to the fire because it's a little bit thicker. It's gonna take a bit longer to cook and hopefully that'll allow it to cook a bit more evenly too. So we'll chuck some high heat gloves on and uh, get it going. All right, so we are at about the three and a half hour mark now. The brisket is looking awesome. We've just propped it up a little bit underneath with some our foil, as you'll see, just to help that rendered fat and the juice run off so it doesn't pull up and ruin any bark. So we've just checked the internal, sitting at about 160 degrees Fahrenheit. So now we're just gonna get two layers of our foil. We're gonna wrap it up and we're gonna put it back in. The pit temp stayed stable at that 280-ish mark for the whole cook so far. But like I said before, the best tip I've ever been taught is to leave your top vent wide open and just control your temps with your bottom one. Um, yeah, it's the best tip I've ever received. It will just sit steady all day. If it's getting too hot, just close your vent a little bit. If you need more heat, open it up and that will give you more airflow and obviously increase that temperature. But you definitely want to start closing it down earlier rather than later. It's easier to increase your temp by opening up your vents rather than try to decrease it by closing them down. And then you run the risk of choking your fire as well. So definitely shut them down earlier to stabilize your temp. And then if you need to uh, increase it once it's stable, just open it up a little bit, lot by a little bit, and they should be all right. So as for now, we're just going to wrap this up. We're not going to add anything to it. You can add beer, stock, anything else you want, but we're going to keep it really simple and just wrap it up in foil nice and tight, get it back in there until it's nice and probe tender around that 200 mark we're gonna check it out and see how it's feeling. If it's not ready, we'll give it a bit longer, but if it's feeling nice, we'll get it out for a rest then and serve it after it's rested. So we'll wrap it up. So our brisket's wrapped up nice and tight. 
My snakes burn just over a quarter of the way through now. So it's up to about here. So everything back here is burnt out. So we're gonna place our brisket around here and then that'll give us a few more hours burn time until we've got to rotate that cooking grate again. So we'll put it back on. Then we're gonna have the lid up this end again so the heat travels up and over the brisket. I've got the point facing more towards the fire source because that's gonna take longer to cook being thicker. So we'll get that back on and we'll check it once we get to around that 200 degrees Fahrenheit internal mark. All right, so we're about six hours in now. Our flat sitting at 193, our points at 190 and our pit temps at 282. The pit temp seriously has barely moved all day. It's sat pretty much on 280. That snake method with that vent trick is an absolute game changer. Every time I've taken the lid off to have a look, it'll obviously drop a little bit, but when I put the lid back on, it's back steady at 280 in no time. So there was a little bit of a difference between the point and the flat before. The point was way behind. So what I did is I just rotated the brisket so the point end was a little bit closer to where the snake was burning. Not so it was directly over the top of it, just so it was a bit closer so that end of the brisket was a little bit hotter. And in about an hour, I noticed that they were coming up to pretty much the same temp. They're only about four degrees apart now. They were about 20 degrees apart. So you definitely don't want the two ends to be cooking way different. You're gonna to have to make running adjustments just like that to get a nice evenly cooked brisket. So I think it's gonna take another hour or two to get to that 200 to 205 range. The one other thing with brisket is don't cook to time. Use time as a very, very rough guide. You wanna be cooking to internal temp and feel. That's the, the key to a nice brisket, which we'll show you a bit later on. All right, so we're another hour in, so around that seven hour mark. We've got an internal in the flat of 204 and the points are 200. So let's get it out. We'll have a probe around and see how it's feeling. That's just feeling really nice. No resistance at all. I'm happy with that. All right, so the brisket is done. Let's uh, waste no more time. We'll cut it straight down in between the point and the flat. And have a closer look. Ooh. Wow. All right, let's uh, get a slice, see how it tastes. I reckon a good brisket should be able to hold up and just pull apart with very minimal effort. Man, that's good. Oh, you wouldn't think that salt and pepper would be so good. And for a brisket from the supermarket, for around the $10 a kilo mark, very, very, very hard to beat. Just so tender. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll give you one last look at this beautiful brisket. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.